everyone learns differently, and today, more than ever, educators need to provide differentiated and adaptive learning. This personalization should speak to a learner's needs, skills, and interests, and intelligent learning solutions have become a must-have for education institutions. To solve the Blooms to Sigma problem, schools and parents must put the learner at the heart of the technology tools that enable one-on-one -on -one learning. Odilo uses data-driven, artificial intelligence-powered solutions to offer a personalized experience and unlimited learning possibilities. This is what we call an unlimited learning ecosystem. Every institution that works with Odilo uses our integrated technology to create unlimited learning opportunities and to provide intelligent Netflix-style experiences that are tailored to the learner and increase engagement. We have demonstrated impact in improving reading and writing habits by three to five times. We offer unified and frictionless access to more than three million multimedia titles, ebooks, videos, audiobooks, courses, podcasts, magazines, textbooks, newspapers, and more. Over three million titles from the best publishers all around the world, so you have all ebooks and learning resources you need in one place. And thanks to our flexible lending models, families can save up to 90% on buying physical titles with Odilo. Educators can create personalized learning experiences to address individual students' learning gaps by combining the multimedia titles with their own content resources and incorporate assessments at different parts of the learning experience. Odilo gives you the ability to fuse assessments for learning, assessments of learning, and assessments as learning through the learning paths and learning clubs that encourage collaborative and group learning. Our mission is to democratize quality educational content and provide personalized platforms for schools, making sure that every learning journey will become unique with a frictionless user experience. We are trusted by more than 146 million users in more than 40 countries around the world. More than 6,000 institutions already have their own unlimited learning ecosystem. What about you? With the new normal, the digital transformation process has accelerated and is challenging the educational system. Families more than ever need the online learning process to be easy and exciting, available to them 24-7, and need instant access to thousands of digital content resources. Welcome to your new partner that is not only helping schools support families better, but creating new opportunities to make learning even more collaborative and personalized. Introducing your school's own unlimited learning ecosystem, powered by Odillo. We are the world's first organization that integrates seamlessly with technology, AI, content from thousands of the best providers, and intelligent learning services, so that each school can promote a culture of unlimited learning possibilities and collaboration the way you want it. Imagine having your own unlimited learning ecosystem with your own branding that personalizes content for each user, that enables families to share access at home, that brings the class together online to learn different things in a structured and an interactive way. On top of this, as it's fully customized, your schools can be specifically promoting the values and learning initiatives that are most important to you. Exciting, right? We think so. We have even proven to increase reading habits by five and reduce the barriers to learning with the benefit of both online, offline access as well as inclusive features so no one is left behind. So, what is in your own unlimited learning ecosystem? Your own branding, a personalized experience, access to the best multimedia content from over 3 million titles and also your own, interactive reading and writing clubs, learning intelligence, first-class support from a learning coach and a team. We also have worked hard to empower both teachers and families. Both will have access to not only the content, but lots of learning intelligence to provide more support for their students. And unlike others, we are truly multimedia. Ebooks, videos, audiobooks, courses, podcasts, and we have access to over 3 million multimedia titles from over 5,000 of the world's best providers. This way, we can ensure we support learners of all abilities and preferences. 
and thanks to our flexible loan models, families can have unlimited access to great content. Today, more than 140 million users in almost 50 countries around the world trust Odillo and have been able to make a difference. Be ahead of the curve and amplify your community's learning possibilities by building an unlimited learning ecosystem for your school today. So, meron na po tayo 101 participants. Okay. So, welcome to our third day of our CAAP NCR General Assembly. And please be reminded of the announcements and instructions flashed on the screen. And in some few minutes, we will start our sessions. Thank you. And you may print screen the mechanics on how to participate to our virtual uh, photo boot contest. Once again, a pleasant afternoon to everyone, and welcome to our last day of our CAAP NCR General Assembly, Learning Session 9 for Christian Formation Committee with the theme, Gifted, Born to Blossom, It is Our Nature to Nurture. I'm Mr. Cornelius Sarga, or Sir Cudet, and I'm the Christian Living Coordinator of Holy Trinity Academy, Sampaloc, Manila. And I will be your moderator for today. So to officially start our session, may I call Ms. Jocelyn Generoso, CCF Head Archive ES Cluster 3, for our opening prayer. Let us pause for a while and remember that we are in God's loving presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God, our loving Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, 
wisdom, and support as we begin this learning session. We lift up to you our resource speaker and everyone here present. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion and allow us to grow closer as a group. Fill us with your spirit and strengthen our commitment to the ministry you have entrusted to us. Constantly remind us that all we do here today, all the decisions that we make, and all that we accomplish is for the pursuit of truth, for your greater glory, and for the love of the academic community, especially the students whom you called us to serve. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, thank you, Miss Jocelyn, for our opening prayer. And now may I call the chair of CAAP NCR Christian Formation Committee and also my CCF head at Holy Trinity Academy, Ms. Joyce Corpus Miral. And let's give her a virtual applause. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone is well. How to bloom where God plants you with grace. The season of life are many. The seasons of life are not consistent. They come so quickly, sometimes without warning, and leave us wondering why. Why this season of life? Why now? And why to me? Where are we now in the seasons of life? How do I bloom where God plants me. How do I bloom with grace in this season of life instead of hide away until it passes? Bloom where you are planted. Every believer is gifted by God in concrete ways to be of service to God, to others, because it is our nature to nurture. We are going to delve in, into the possibility of God's guidance to a particular task, job, career, or type of work. We are going to also, we need to see that everyone is called to belong to Christ and participate in his creative, redemptive work. Everyone is commanded to work to the degree they are able. God calls us to whole life, not just to a job or career. God gives us gifts for accomplishing the work he wants us to do. As we are going to journey this afternoon session, let us acknowledge and celebrate our giftedness. Take the responsibility to care for and nurture one another. Good afternoon and welcome to this learning session number nine. Thank you, Miss Joyce, for that wonderful message. So before we proceed to our program, let us also thank our sponsors for the CAPNCR General Assembly. For our gold sponsors, Diwa, Odilo, Vibal, and Clips. And for our silver sponsors, Abiva Publishing House, Don Bosco Press, Phoenix Publishing House, Techno Kids. Rex, The Inteligente Publishing, 
Sibs Publishing House, and Vicarious Publication and Trading. And for the bronze sponsors, and sorry, Tech Factors. Yeah. Tech Factors Incorporated. So for our bronze sponsors, Johnny and Hansel Publications, Dream Books Publication, and Excelandia IT Services. Maraming salamat po sa inyong mga butihing sponsors. So, now allow me to, to introduce our guest speaker for today. He graduated philosophy at San Carlos Seminary, Mass Communications at St. Paul Seminary, Sacred Theology at University of Santo Tomas Magna Cum Laude, Liturgical Studies at Liturgical Institute, Mandalayan University of St. Mary of the Lake, Paul VI Institute of Liturgy, San Vera College Graduate School of Liturgy, Pastoral Sociology at Asian Social Institute. He also took his licentiate, Master of Arts in Sacred Theology at University of Santo Tomas, Faculty of Sacred Theology, Magna Cum Laude. And currently pursuing his doctorate in Sacred Theology at University of Santo Tomas, Faculty of Sacred Theology. For his pastoral ministry assignments, he became the private secretary to his eminence, Paul Joseph Cardinal Cordes, on his visit in Manila last 2009 a member of the Delegation of the Holy See to the 9 FABC Plenary Assembly last September 2009 and Private Secretary to the Papal Legion, His Eminence Francis Cardinal Aris. He also became Assistant Coordinator for Papal Visit Liturgy Committee last 2015 and became an acting parish priest for Our Lady of Fatima Parish Mandaluyong City. He also became a parochial vicar of Most Holy Trinity Parish, Sampaloc, Manila, St. John of the Cross Parish, Pembo, Makati City, St. Anthony of Padua Parish, Singalong, Manila. He also became the coordinator for young clergy of the Archdiocese of Manila, executive assistant for Episcopal Commission on the Biblical Apostolate, Private Secretary of Bishop Chrysostome, Chrysostomo E. Yalum, Faculty Member of Our Lady of Guadalupe Minor Seminary, Chairman of the Diamond Jubilee Celebrations of US3, UST Central Seminary, Professor at University of Santo Tomas, Faculty of Philosophy and Institute of Catechetics of the Archdiocese of Manila, an Executive assistant to the Chancellor of Archdiocese of Manila. And for his present assignments, he is a member of Presbyteral Council of Archdiocese of Manila, Vicar Foreign of Vicariate of San Fernando de Delao. He is the current parish priest of Our Lady of Peña Francia de Manila Parish at Paco, Manila. Assistant Commissioner of Archdiocese and Liturgical Commission of Archdiocese of Manila. He is also a professor of liturgy at San Carlos Graduate School of Theology, Recoletos School of Theology, Institute of Preaching, Dominican Province of the Philippines. He is a minister of ministry for lectors and commentators. Archdiocesan Master of Liturgical Celebrations, Assistant Minister for Ministry for Liturgical Environment, and lastly, Custodian of Archdiocesan Sacristy. And now, let us welcome ang isa sa mga paring nagkasal sa akin, Reverend Father Carmelo Jack P. Arada, 
Jr. And let us give him a virtual applause. Good afternoon, Father Jack. Hello, maraming salamat, Sir Kune. At uh, magandang hapon po sa lahat ng uh, nakikinig po sa atin na uh, dito po sa ating conference. I was given that I will I will share my uh, my screen. Yeah. So I was I was given given the topic uh, gifted to give. It is our nature to nurture for the religious educators of the SEAP NCR. Naghanda po ako ng panalangin para po sama-sama po tayong magsimula sa atin pong pagninilay ngayong uh, hapong ito. Let us together pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Prayer for wearing a face mask. Creator God, as I prepare to go into the world, help me to see the sacrament in wearing this cloth. Let it be an outward sign of an inward grace, a tangible and visible way of living love for my neighbors as I love myself. Since my lips will be covered, uncover my heart. That people would see my smile in the crinkles around my eyes. Since my voice may be muffled, help me to speak clearly. Not only with my words, but with my actions. As the elastic touches my ears, remind me to listen carefully and caringly to all those I meet. May this simple piece of cloth be shield and banner, and each breath that it holds be filled with your love. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. So our conference for this afternoon is uh, with the theme, Gifted to Give, it is our nature to nurture. The nature of educators, the nature of teachers is to nurture. We situate this uh, conference as we celebrate as a nation, as we celebrate as a nation, the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. Limang daang taon ng Kristyanismo sa Pilipinas. Marahil narinig nyo na po yung kwento ng dalawang matanda nagdiriwang ng kanilang uh, wedding anniversary. Matagal na silang mag-asawa. Tumanda na silang magkasama sa isa't isa. At nung magpapalitan na sila muli ng sasariwain na nila yung kanilang mga pangapo sa kasal sa isa't isa, nung Tinatanong na nung pare yung babae, tinignan niya yung lalaki, sabi nung babae dun sa kanyang asawang lalaki, who are you? At sabi naman nung lalaki dun sa kanyang asawang babae, I am tired of you too. Alam niyo po, ngayong pinagdiriwang natin tong uh, 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines, uh, Baka ito po yung nararanasan natin. Nararanasan natin na nakalimot na o kaya napapagod na, no? We 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 are slow to remember, we are quick to forget and we might be tired also like like the couple. No? Who are you? I am also tired of you. That is why I would like to invite you to our reflections for this uh, afternoon's conference that our celebrations of the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines must lead us to gratitude, to thanking the Lord for the gift of our faith, and uh, more than that, to mission. And that is why also um, 
because our theme as uh, our theme for this year is gifted to give we will talk about gifts we will talk about receiving gifts and uh, nurturing the gifts we have received as our theme tells us it is our nature to nurture it is our nature to nurture ngayong panahon ng pandemya no Paano ba tayo mag-nurture? Lahat ay online, lahat ay with the use of technology. No? How do we nurture during this time of pandemic? How do we continue our mission of nurturing young people as religious educators? Uh, as, as I have said, we are celebrating the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. And uh, when we look at the uh, circumstances of the coming of Christianity in the Philippines, we will see yung mga nagdala ng Christianismo dito sa Pilipinas, they were really bound to the Spice Islands. Pero dito sila sa Pilipinas dinala ng hangin. At sabi nga ni Bishop uh, uh, Bilyone, sabi, nothing happens by accident the sudden surprising developments that happen no sa spice island sila dapat pupunta pero napunta sila dito pero we will see that the events in our lives are not accidents we can call them godsidents the hand of god was there and the, the landing of the of those who brought christianity here in the philippines led to the first mass and eventually to the first baptism. Kapag titingnan po natin yung kasaysayan, of course there were impure elements. Yung pagpunta nila dito, quest for gold, trade for spices, commerce. The wind ultimately played a factor. The wind imposed its will and they were brought to the Philippine shores. At ano yung plano ng Diyos? Ang Pilipinas, yung mamuno para sa Christianization of Asia and of course, the rest of the world. We know that in April 14, 1521, Raha Humabon was baptized in the morning and all the other men while the queen was baptized in the afternoon and all the other women. So the coming of Christianity in the Philippines is a gift of being claimed for Christ. Ito lang po yung babalikan natin, no? Yung pagdating ng Kristiyanismo dito sa Pilipinas, no, ay kal- kaloob ng pagtatangi para kay Kristo, the gift of being claimed for Christ, no? Kaya po ang unang bahagi po ng ating uh, conference, no, um gusto ko pong tignan natin when we talk about gifts, no, ang unang Ang unang maiisip natin no nung si Jesus ay dinalaw nung tatlong pantas dinalhan siya ng mga regalo no the the three wise men brought gifts to the newborn child no pero magandang tingnan po natin yung kwento kasi ito pong kwento nung pan, ng mga pantas no uh, sa unang bahagi po nung pagninilay natin uh, will give us yung will lead us to reflecting how do we receive gifts no how do we value the gifts that God has given us? Yun pong magi, they followed the star. They followed the star and they expected that the Messiah will be there kung saan hihinto yung tala. Pero alam po natin yung kwento. Magandang tanong, what happens when you follow the star and then you are led to the stable? You are led to a manger. You are led to a stinking stable. Magandang tanungin po siguro natin ngayong bahagi ng buhay ninyo. What is your stable? Ano po ba yung stable? Yan yung mga bagay na iba naman yung plano natin. Iba naman yung, yung gusto nating mangyari sa buhay natin. Pero dito tayo dinala ng pagkakataon. At ano yung unang... What is the first challenge for us by the story of the Magi? How do we receive God's gifts to us? 
Katulad po nung mga pantas, hanapin natin si Jesus kahit na sa mga sabsaban ng buhay. Yung mga pantas, they were, they were expecting something else. Anak nga naman ng Diyos ito. Kaya nga siguro, ang inaasahan nila, when they follow the, the star, they will they will be led to a palace to a mansion no malaking palasyo malaking mansion magandang kama gintong kama pero saan sila dinala saan huminto yung uh, tala huminto yung tala sa sabsaban huminto ang nakita nila isang maliit na sanggol pero anong ginawa po ng mga nung mga pantas what did the magi do hindi po sila umurong nang makita nila si Jesus sa sabsaban. Alam niyo po, kapag sumusunod tayo sa mga tala ng buhay natin, may mga pagkakataon, dinadala tayo sa sabsaban. At minsan sasabihin natin, dahil hindi yun ang inaasahan natin, ito lang pala. Naloko yata kami, nauto yata kami. And the, how do we respond to these situations? There, there, are, there are times that we are frustrated. There are times that we are disappointed when our expectations are not met. Ngayong panahon ng pandemya, maraming, maraming nawala, maraming uh, opportunities, kahit kalusugan, buhay, no? maraming na, nawala. No? Hindi ito yung plano natin sa buhay natin. Parang nagkaroon ng disruption lahat yung mga plano natin sa buhay dahil sa pandemyang ito. Maraming plano, maraming expectations yung nabigo. Iba yung kinahat kina iba yung iba yung nadat na natin dahil sa pandemyang ito. At uh, may mga pagkakataon kapag ka disappointed tayo, kapag ka frustrated tayo, anong ginagawa natin? Umaayaw tayo. Lumalayo tayo. Kapag nasasaktan tayo, ayaw na nating magtiwala. Halimbawa, no? Ewan ko kung naranasan niyo na ito, no? Sinabi niyo na ba sa asawa niyo, kung hindi sana ikaw ang asawa ko, mas masaya sana ang buhay ko. Kung hindi sana kayo ang barkada ko, mas mabait sana ako. Kung hindi ito yung trabaho ko, mas mayaman sana ako. Pero ano yung yung unang paanyaya sa atin like the Magi, no? When we when we are led by the star to a to a stable, to a manger, are we willing to stay? Sasabihin ba natin I will not leave at once because I will find God in this stable. I will find God in this stable. Ito yung unang Paanyaya sa atin, no? uh, what is your stable right now? What is your manger right now? San ka dinala ng pandemyang ito na hindi mo inaasahan that you are frustrated, that you are disappointed, parang gusto mo nang umayaw, parang gusto mo nang sumuko. And the invitation of the example of the Magi is to say, I am willing to stay. I will not live at once. I will find God in this stable. Meron daw pong isang uh, tatay, no? Uh, sabi niya dun sa kanyang asawa, sawang-sawa na ako sa ugali mo, no? Lalayas na ako. Sabi niya, isang ka naman pupunta, sabi ng babae, pupunta ako sa dreamland, sabi ng lalaki. So, kumuha siya ng mga gamit niya, dala-dala niya, sabi niya, Doon sa dreamland, walang asawang katulad mo. Walang problemadong buhay katulad ng sa pamilyang ito. So, naglakad siya, kung saan siya dali ng mga paa niya, hanggang sa nakarating siya sa medyo parang gubat na. No? Tapos nung, mag, nung, nung nagdilim na, napagod na rin siya sa kanyang paglalakad, ang ginawa niya, nagdesisyon siyang magpahinga. Para malaman niya, pagising niya kinabukasan, Kung saan siya papapunta, yung kanyang sapatos, hinarap niya kung saan siya dapat papunta, kung saan siya magtutuloy ng kanyang paglalakbay. E nung natutulog siya, 
may mga batang naglaro at habang naglalaro yung mga bata, binaligtad yung kanyang sapatos. No? Binaligtad yung kanyang sapatos. Kaya kinabukasan, pagising niya, dahil doon nakaturo yung kanyang sapatos, yun yung daan na sinundan niya. Kaya lakad siya, lakad, lakad. Maya maya sabi niya, parang kilala ko tong lugar na ito. Parang ito yung village namin. Sabi niya, ah, di bali, ito siguro talaga yung dreamland ko. Dito walang problema, dito masaya ang buhay. Tapos maya maya habang naglalakad siya, nakita niya, ay parang kamukha din ito ng street namin. Tapos pagdating niya doon sa harap ng bahay, pagkatok niya, pagbukas ng pintuan, misis niya ang nagbukas ng pintuan. At sabi ng misis niya, Welcome to Dreamland. Welcome to Dreamland. May mga kanya-kanya tayong Dreamland. Pero kapag ka hinahanap natin at papahalagahan natin yung regalong ibinigay sa atin ng Diyos, minsan dadalhin tayo sa mga sabsaba ng buhay. We will be brought to the stables of life where we will be disappointed. Yung mga plano natin hindi masusunod. No? Yung mga plano natin hindi ayon sa kagustuhan natin. No? But are we willing to stay? Kaya ba nating sabihin, I will not live at once. I will find God in, his, in this difficult, unexpected frustrating, disappointing situation. Ikalawa, kapag ka dinala, dinadala tayo sa mga sabsaba ng buhay natin, no? the first challenge is to find God in the stables of life. The second challenge about gifts, about receiving gifts, is we ourselves, we offer the very best to God. Sipin natin yung reaction ng mga pantas pagdating nila dun sa sabsaba nakita nila isang batang maliit isang sanggol sabi nung sabi siguro ng mga pantas bata pala bakit nagdala tayo ng gold frankincense and myrrh sabi nila dapat yata lego dinala natin laruan ng dinala natin bakit ito dinala natin itong insenso baka hikain yung bata no? pero ibinigay nila yung bit-bit nila, the very best that they can give. Kapag ka nafo-frustrate tayo, kapag ka nadi-disappoint tayo, nagiging sigurista tayo. Nagiging sigurista tayo. At uh, mayroon mga pagkakataon, nakakalungkot yung attitude natin. No? Sasabihin natin, pwede na yan, okay na yan. Basta matapos lang at basta magawa lang. Yung attitude din na kapag ka parang hindi okay sa atin, we hold back. No? We hold back. Kapag ka hindi patas ang laban, kapag ka parang lugi tayo, we hold back. No? Sigurista tayo kapag ka nagbibigay tayo. No? Halimbawa yung pagka-patlak, di ba? Kapag ka family reunion, tingnan mo nga muna kung ano yung dala nilang ulam. No? Huwag mo munang ilagay ang kalderetang dala natin. No? No? We hold back. No? Pero the, the set Second challenge, no, regarding the gifts that we receive, no, do I give my best in every situation? Ibigay, ibigay ang the best sa Dios, no. Si Bo Sanchez ay uh, kinekwento, kinekwento niya na nung bata-bata siya ay sumali siya sa isang uh, lay organization at tumira sila sa isang bahay, no. At dahil nakatira sila sa isang bahay naghati-hati sila ng trabaho nila no so merong maglilinis ng uh, mag gardening merong tagalinis ng banyo merong tagahugas ng tinggan ang unang assignment niya ay tagalinis ng banyo sabi niya diring-diri ako nung naglilinis ako ng banyo sabi niya kung banyo ko lang yan napakadaling linisin niya no sabi niya pero ginagamit din ng iba yung iba kapag ka gumamit, may remembrance pa pag gumamit ng banyo. Sabi niya, kaya diring-diri daw siya. No? Pero sabi niya, dumating yung punto na uh, nag-enjoy na rin siya. Sabi niya, ito yung assignment ko. This is my mission. This is my contribution. Dito sa bahay na ito, 
Kaya sabi niya, dumating sa punto, he enjoyed cleaning the CR, kumakanta pa siya ng Shine Jesus Shine habang nililinis niya yung kubeta. Nung nag-e-enjoy na siya, biglang in-announce, magpapalit sila ng assignment. No? At ang bago niyang assignment, maghuhugas ng pinggan. At sa unang gabi na maghuhugas siya ng pinggan, may malaking handaan dun sa kanilang bahay, kaya nga patong-patong yung mga huhugasan niyang pinggan. At habang naguhuga siya, nagdadabog siya, sabi niya, masaya na ako dun sa una kong trabaho, okay na sa akin maguhug, okay, okay na sa akin maglilinis ng siat, bakit ginawa pa akong tagapaghugas ng, ng pinggan? At habang naguhugas daw siya ng pinggan, sabi niya, parang, sabi niya, parang kilala ko tong pangkuskus na ito. <laughs> pumunta siya dun sa, pumunta siya sa cabinet sa tabi ng CR, no? Ay, ayun nga, no? Ang ginagamit pala niyang pang, pang, panghugas ng pinggan ay yung paborito niyang pangkuskus ng kubeta. No? At sabi niya, kapag kumatok daw siya sa pintuan ng langit sa dulo ng buhay niya, kapag tinanong daw siya ni Jesus o ni San Pedro, Aber, bakit kita papapasukin ng langit? Anong ginawa mong mabuti sa lupa? Sabi niya, parang, parang nakakahiya namang sabihin ko na Naging magaling akong lay preacher sa lupa o kaya nagpatayo ako ng home for the aged at saka bahay ampunan. Sabi niya, ah, alam ko na. Sabi niya, siguro sasabihin sa akin ni San Pedro, Bo, come and enter the kingdom of heaven because you have cleaned that toilet every day with love in your heart. With love in your heart. Do you give your best in every situation? No? Ang tawag ng mga hiswita ay magis. No? The very best that we can give in every situation. This is a painting by Rembrandt of the uh, presentation of the child Jesus at the temple. No? At uh, yan si Sa- Simeon. No? Nung inabot, inabot sa kanya, inabot ni inabot ni Maria at ni Jose sa kanya si Jesus. No? At pansinin ninyo yung reaction ni Simeon, the old Simeon. No? Pansinin ninyo siya, mayroong pagkagulat, mayroong pagkamangha, mayroong ding paggalang. Ang tagal-tagal na hinintay ni Simeon na makita niya, no? makita niya yung tagapagligtas for a long time kaya nga nando na sila nando na sila ni Ana sa templo no for a long time they were waiting for the Messiah to come pero ano kaya yung ano kaya yung naging reaction nitong si Simeon no ah uh, baka sinabi din niya bata lang pala itong Messias na magpapakita pero pansinin niyo po yung kanyang kamay no uh, look at how Simeon held the the messiah the the infant messiah in his hands no hindi niya kinabig no he did not grab the gift marahil excited itong si Simon no sabi niya siguro walang hahawak na iba ang tagal-tagal ko tong hinintay pero yung yung kamay niya no look at his hands his hands did not grab That is why his heart knows how to let go. His hands did not grab. That is why his heart knows how to let go. Kaya nga ano yung naging panalangin itong si Simon? No? Sabi niya, Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Pwede namang humirit itong si Simon. No? Pwede naman niyang sabihin, Pwede bang tumawat, no? Total, nahantay ko na rin ng ganitong katagal. Pwede pa ba akong bigyan ng ilang taon pa para makita ko naman kung anong gagawin itong Messias na ito? Kung paano siya gagawa ng mga himala? Kung paano siya mag-aalay ng kanyang buhay para iligtas ang sangkatauhan? Pero hindi, no? Anong sabi ni Simeon? Lord, you may now let your servant go in peace. Mission accomplished. No? Because his hands 
did not grab, his heart was willing to let go. Naalala ko tuloy ang nanay ko no, nung inordinahan na kong pare. No, iyak ng iyak ang nanay ko. No, iyak ng iyak ang nanay ko. No, sabi niya siguro pagkatapos ng maraming taon ng pagdarasal, pare na ang anak ko. No, at uh, para sa isang nanay ng pare, no, talagang ang mga nanay ng pare parang si Santa Monica, lumuluha, nagdarasal, no? para sa kabanalan, para sa katapatan ng anak na pare. No? Alam niyo po, meron kaming, meron, meron pong tradisyon na kapag inoordinahan ng pare, we, our hands are anointed and after the anointing with chrism of our hands, binibigyan po kami ng tela na doon namin ipapahid yung chrism. And according to tradition, according to tradition, that piece of cloth is given to the mother of a priest. Noon pong biglaang sumakabilang buhay ang aking nanay, naalala ko po bago namin sa ilibing, dito po sa picture nilalagay ko po sa kamay ng nanay ko yung tela. Sabi po kasi ay uh, kapag ka humarap sa Diyos ang nanay ng pare, tatanungin siya, I have given everything to you, binigay ko ang lahat sa iyo, anong ibabalik mo sa akin? Hindi raw kailangang magsalita ng nanay ng isang pare. Ipapakita niya lang yung tela, no? Marahil naninilaw na. Ang ibig sabihin nito, parang sinasabi niya sa Diyos, inalay ko sa iyo ang pinakamamahal kong anak para maging pare. Pero alam ko kahit na wala yung telang ito, papapasukin ng nanay ko sa langit dahil naging mabuti siyang nanay. Dahil naging mabuti siyang nanay. Alam ko nung inordinahan ako, yun din siguro yung dasal ng nanay ko, yung parang mission accomplished, Lord, you may now let your servant go in peace. Ano man yung gagawin natin, gagawin natin yung the best. Ibubuhos natin ang lahat. Yung masasabi natin, wala na akong ipinagdamot, na ibigay ko na ang lahat. You may now let your servant go in peace. Noon pong nagsisimula ang pandemya, sa po si Susan Hylerts. Nagkaroon po siya ng COVID. At nung nasa ospital siya, bibigyan na siya ng ventilator kasi nahihirapan na siyang huminga. 90 years old na po si Susan. At alam niyo po yung sabi niya, no, no? Give it to the younger ones. Give it to the younger ones. Sabi ni Su- Susan, Give it to, you, to the younger ones. I am ready to go. I have lived a beautiful life. I have lived a beautiful life. Yung, sa dulo ng bawat araw natin, sasabihin natin, ngayong araw na ito, naging mabuti ako. Ngayong araw na ito, nagbahagi ako. Ngayong araw na ito, nagpatawad ako. Ngayong araw na ito, hindi ako nanakit ng kapwa. This is the second challenge of the media. Do I give my best to every situation? Sabi po ni... Father Janigo, no? uh, tayong mga professors, teachers, no? uh, nararanasan natin na we, 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 are, we are so generous, we are so selfless. Sabi niya, maybe we are at a point in our lives when our life is devoted almost entirely to mentoring others, helping them to find themselves or to raising children or caring for a loved one who is ill. 
there can be no more selfless season in our lives. We are called to a generosity that we sometimes don't even realize we are capable of, but often end up surprising ourselves. But there is a temptation. The natural resistance to the prospect of an empty nest. Ano raw po yung empty nest? No? Yung empty nest na because we have given so much no? sa atin pong pagtuturo, sa paggabay sa mga kabataan, yun pong mga nag-aalaga sa kanilang mga magulang na may sakit. No? Because we have, we have in, invested so much in them, we are reluctant to set them free. Naalala ko po si Sir Richard Pascogin. Kilala niyo po siguro siya. He was the director for Campus Ministry of uh, UST. He is a professor of religious education and he died a few months ago. Sabi niya, teachers understand that there is such a thing as a ministry of being left behind. Yan daw yung buhay natin bilang mga guro. Kasi yung guro, naghihintay kasi merong umaalis, may dumarating na bago. No? Every year for us is hello and goodbye. Embrace and let go. Our noble calling is to be experts in the art of imparting and then parting. We supply the wings. And we often don't get to fly. We are just happy seeing the world through the eyes of those we taught. A few years ago, si Sir Richard yung nag-deliver ng, I think, the fourth word. No? Uh, Doon po sa seven last words sa Santo Domingo. Kaya po nung siya'y pumanaw a few months ago, naalala ko po yung sharing niya. No? Uh, no, not the fourth word. No? Yung naganap na, it is finished. No? At ito po yung naalala kong binahagi niya. Nung sinabi daw ni Jesus na naganap na, pagkatapos nun ay yumuko na si Jesus. Nang sinabi daw ni Jesus na naganap na, tila sinasabi ni Jesus, Ibinigay ko na ang lahat. Wala na akong ipinagkait sa inyo. Wala na akong ipinagdamot sa inyo. Naganap na. Natapos na. At pagkatapos, yumuko na siya. And we have just witnessed the greatest performance of his life. Kaya sabi ko sa kanya, no? nung uh, nakakapanghinayang, no? pero alam ko, pagharap niya sa Diyos, nasabi niyang mission accomplished. No? Uh, ngayon, namimiss namin si Sir Richard kasi uh, si Sir Richard talaga yung namumuno sa mga liturgical activities, sa mga religious activities sa university, being the director of campus ministry. Lagi kaming magkatrabaho sa mga retreats ng mga employees. No? At talaga namang kapag ka kumilos at gumawa si Sir Richard, no? ibinubuhos ang lahat. Kaya nga nung nawala siya, alam ko na sabi niya sa Diyos, ibinigay ko na ang lahat. Wala akong ipinagkait, wala akong ipinagdamot, naganap na, natapos na. At sana sa bawat, sa bawat pagtatapos ng araw, no? as religious educators, as family, as, as parents, no? uh, tayong mga nagsisikap na maging mabuting tao, masasabi natin to walang panghihinayang no thank yous no sorries no i'm no 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 thank yous no i'm sorry no i love yous that are left unsaid now we we look at some invitations no um, sabi ko yung about receiving gifts but also about nurturing gifts no let us look at some invitations no Uh, ito pong panahon ng uh, pandemya, marami pong nakaka-unsettle, niyanig tayo nitong pandemyang ito. No? Pero 
sa bawat krisis daw po, meron tayong tinatawag na crisis-related growth. No? At sa bawat krisis, we find a new sense of purpose. And I hope you have experienced this. No? Yung, you, have, you have discovered the value of family. You have discovered the, the importance of your mission. And uh, really, the, the crisis has become a season of selflessness. Sabi nga ng isang doktor, si Dr. Vince Modere, sabi niya, this pandemic has brought out the best in us. Sabi niya, there is no better time to die for others, but this is the best time to serve our people. Maganda daw po nitong, nitong panahon ng pandemya, lalo na kapag ka-lockdown, bawal lumabas. That is why there was an invitation to enter into the inner life. We have developed an inner life. Hopefully you have experienced this. No? Tapos marami po siguro took the advantage of online education. We have developed yung a sense of self-worth, a sense of self-reliance. We have developed a capacity for introspection. We have also allowed ourselves to confront our fears. At kapag kaya daw po nating harapin yung ating mga takot, Ano daw yung mga, yung mga demons in our lives? Pain, anger, fear, a stronger self emerges. And I hope this is the gift of the pandemic for many of us. Crisis-related growth. No? Ano daw nangyayari kapag ka-crisis? It is also graced time. Panahon ng biyaya. Maganda daw po yung karanasan na we realize that we are not in control. Kasi kapag ka we, in, we are in control, Lahat pinaplano natin. Ah, mas, maraming, mas maraming expectations, mas marami ding disappoint, disappointments and frustrations. But this is grace time. We realize that we are not in control and it is also an experience of birthing. Maraming, maraming bagong kaloob yung natanggap natin ngayong panahon ng krisis. Kapag ka daw po we realize that we are not in control, we become more teachable because we are humble to be taught. We become docile because of the disposition of humility. We become empty. We become receptive para daw tayong erase tablets waiting for new words. So birthing. Sana po nararanasan natin ito, no? Uh, even with the uh, uh, yung, yung hopelessness, even with frustrating and difficult situations, no, it has become an experience of birthing for us. No, uh, yung hayaan nating turuan tayo ng buhay, turuan tayo ng pananampalataya natin, turuan tayo ng sitwasyon. Dito lang po sa parokya ko, no. Yun amin pong ang tawag po namin sa amin community pantry hapag ni Inang Peña. At ang dami pong ang dami ko pong natututunan, no? Minsan po no habang nakabilad sa araw kami po sinasamahan ko po yung aming mga kabataan. Tumigil po yung mama na may kariton na naglalako ng gulay. Nagbigay siya ng ilang gulay doon sa kanyang tinitinda, pandagdag daw kasi nakita niya ang haba ng pila doon sa community pantry. Yung isa naming parokyano dito, si Aling Anding, siya yung naglilinis dyan sa baba ng aming, sa harap ng Adoration Chapel. Nakita niya yung mga kabataan nakabilad sa araw. E, iniisip po, gano'n lang naman yung pension nito, ang liit lang ng pension niya. Pero every time na may pantry, nagdadala siya ng ice cream para dun sa mga kabataan. Meron akong isang kaibigan na Nakikita niya kasi sa Facebook yung aming community pantry. Sabi niya, Kuya, magbibigay ako sa community pantry ninyo. E alam ko wala siyang trabaho ngayon. Tapos maya-maya, nakareceive ako ng notification na may nagpadala ng 150 pesos. Ibinawas pa niya dun sa kakaunti na lang niyang ipon. Uh, 
It is an experience of birthing. No? Itong pandemya, tinuruan tayo ng sitwasyon, tinuruan tayo ng difficulties that we have experienced, no? pero tinuturuan din natin ng bawat isa. The example of people who are encountering difficulties, who are in difficult situations, how they emerge as people of faith. No? Kaya nga sabi, uh, new saints and heroes next door in this time of pandemic. Uh, ilang mga bagay po, no? uh, a few dispositions, I, I chose three, no? uh, mabilis lang po nating uh, dadaanan. Ano? Uh, bakit si St. Dominic, no? uh, ako po ay uh, member ng clerical fraternity of St. Dominic in the Philippines, no? And uh, we are celebrating the 800 years of the death or the Dies Natalis of St. Dominic. No? At pumili lang po ako, tatlong, tatlong disposition niya kapag ka nagdarasal siya. Three dispositions when he prays. No? Pero I would like this to be our, our, our points, our, our reflection points. No? Uh, how do we nurture our mission of being... Uh, religious educators of our young people. Tatlong bagay po. No? Una, si St. Dominic daw po, kapag ka nagdarasal, no? kapag nagdarasal, sabi po dun sa uh, uh, sabi po dun sa description of his prayer, sitting quietly, Dominic would pause in recollection with an inner attitude of listening. An inner attitude of listening. Kinuha ko po yung mga yung yung ibang mga bahagi po ng ng uh, pagba, pagbabahagi ko po ngayon doon po sa naging situationer ng Synod of the Youth sa Roma no uh, paano tayo bilang simbahan makakapaglingkod sa mga kabataan paano natin masasabayan paano natin paano tayo makikilakbay sa mga kabataan no and th- this is the first invitation no to be a listening church to be listening religious educators no? um, si Pope Francis at the end of that synod on the youth no uh, yung gospel of the concluding mass was about the healing of Bartimaeus the blind man Bartimaeus sabi ni Pope Francis lahat daw kahit na si Bartimaeus sigaw ng sigaw no Sinasaway si Bartimeo, sinasabihan na na nakakaistorbo ka lang, tumahimik ka lang, no? Dinadaanan lang siya, sinasaway siya, walang pakialam sa kanya. Pero si Jesus anong ginawa? Huminto para pakinggan siya. Para pakinggan siya, no? Sabi ni Pope Francis, none of the disciples stopped as Jesus did. They continued to walk, going on as if nothing were happening. If Bartimeo was blind, they were deaf. At ito daw po yung nakakalungkot, no? And uh, this is an important attitude that we have to develop as uh, educators of our young people, no? Uh, minsan sa uh, eh, ngayon po hindi natin nakikita yung ating mga estudyante, no? Pero nararanasan po natin yan, maraming concerns, no? Uh, pero minsan we we na itataboy natin sila minsan hindi tayo wala tayong panahong makinig no ang ang tawag po ni Pope Francis the danger of a scheduled faith yung kapag ka wala dun sa schedule mo nung araw na yon istorbo na yung ibang lalapit sa yon istorbo na yung ibang hihiling ng tulong istorbo na yung ibang mga ngailangan sabi niya when when our faith is scheduled when our charity is scheduled sabi niya we lose wonder, we lose gratitude and enthusiasm, and we risk becoming habitually unmoved by grace. Lumilipad ang biyaya. Lumilipad yung pagkakataon na maging biyaya sa kapwa. Sabi, sabi po ni Pope Francis, I would like to say to the young people, in the name of all of us adults, forgive us when we have not listened to you. If instead of opening our hearts, we have filled your ears. As Christ's church, we want to listen to you with love, certain of two things, 
that your lives are precious in God's eyes because God is young and God loves young people and that your lives are precious in our eyes too. Kinekwento po ni Sir ni Jude Liao, no? siguro kilala siya ng iba sa inyo. No? Na minsan daw, may lumapit sa kanyang estudyante niya, sabi daw sa kanya, Sir, bakit ba kailangan namin pumasok pa araw-araw? No? Sabi niya, bakit kailangan makinig pa sa teacher? No? Sabi niya, pwede namang itanong lahat kay Google. No? Si Google, ang dali-dali nga, tatanungin lang, sumasagot. No? Sabi niya, sa tingin ko nga, sir, mas matalino si Google kaysa sa inyo. No? Nagulat daw siya, medyo parang nainsulto siya. No? Pero sabi niya, sige, balik ka bukas, mag-usap tayo, pag-iisipan ko yung tanong mo, bakit kailangan ng teacher may Google naman? Pero bago po kwento yung sagot, no? Si Google daw po kasi, no? Si Google daw po kasi kinikwento ni ni Sir Jude, no? Uh, kaya 'yun ang pinagkakatiwalaan ng mga kabataan, no? Una, si Google kapag ka tinanong, sumasagot agad. <laughs> kapag tinanong, sumasagot agad at minsan ang daming ang sagot, no? Ang daming sagot. Ikalawa, kapag nagtanong kay Google, hindi niya hinuhusgahan yung nagtanong at yung tanong. Kapag tinanong, sumasagot. Minsan kasi pag tinanong tayo, tumatahimik lang tayo kapag ayaw natin yung tanong o yung pagkakatanong. Pero si Google, hindi niya hinuhusgahan yung tanong at yung nagtanong. Si Google, kapag ka tinanong, sumasagot. Pero sabi ni Sir Jude, no? Kinabukasan, bumalik yung estudyante. O sir, sabi niya, may sagot na po ba kayo sa tanong ko? Sabi niya, meron. Sabi niya, bakit kailangan pa rin ng teacher kahit na kayang sagutin lahat ni Google? Kasi si teacher may puso. Si Google wala. Kasi sa totoo po, yung puso naman talaga ang nakikinig. Listening transforms the hearts of those who do it, especially when it takes place with an interior disposition of harmony and docility to the Spirit. Yun pong pakikinig, hindi lang para kumalap ng informasyon, hindi lang para madagdagan yung pwede nating itchismis, no? nor it, it, is it a strategy of, for achieving a goal, but it is the manner in which God Himself relates to His people. Ito daw po yung pinakamagandang as religious educators, this is a challenge for us also. How do we teach our young people to see the world? No? Paano daw dapat natin tinitignan ng mundo? Paano natin sinasagot ang mga tanong ng mundo, ang mga tanong natin sa mundo? No? Uh, makikita po natin sabi ni Ronald Rollheiser, no? look at how John the Beloved, no? Ang tawag nga po ni Bishop Soc Villegas kay John the Beloved ay tapat na alagad. Kasi sabi niya tapat na alagad kasi itinapat ni Juan ang kanyang pandinig sa pagtibok ng puso ni Jesus. At sabi ni Ronald Rollheiser, how do we look at the world? We look at the world with our ears listening to the beating of the heart of Jesus. Para daw po yung tugo natin sa problema ng mundo, sa mga tanong natin tungkol sa mundo, ay katulad ng magiging tugo ng pagtibok ng puso ni Jesus. Si Jesus, nung nakapako sa krus, no, it was so painful, the wounds are so painful, but He still listened. No? Nakinig pa rin siya. Nakinig siya dun sa tanong ng isang magnanakaw. Nakinig siya dun sa hinaing ng magnanakaw. Sabi niya, kapag ka pupunta na po kayo sa inyong kaharian, isama niyo po ako. At anong sabi ni Jesus? Ngayon din, isasama kita sa paraiso. Kapag nasasakatan kasi tayo, nagsasara lahat. Pero si Jesus nakinig. Nakinig dun sa nakinig dun sa magnanakaw sa kanyang tabi. 
nakinig kay Maria, nakinig kay Juan sa kanyang paana. Five minutes now. <laughs> Sige. The young express the desire to be heard, recognized, and accompanied. Many find that their voice is not considered interesting or useful, and few older people are willing and able to listen to them. So the challenge to be a listening church. No? Ito po yung sabi ni, ni Cardinal Vidal. No? Sabi niya, ito daw yung temptation for us priests and teachers because everybody listens to him. He forgets to listen to everybody else. He is the teacher and he presumes everybody to be his student. When a teacher, when a priest makes this presumption, he loses his vocation to serve. When he thinks he knows everything, he learns nothing from anybody and it is not possible to serve. And we can say also it is not possible to teach someone from whom one has nothing to learn. Ngayon, sumunod po. Tears. No? Kapag nagdarasal daw po si San, Santo Domingo, lumuluha siya. No? Lumuluha siya. He wept when he prayed. He wept when he offered Mass. No? Uh, naalala ko po nung dumalaw si Pope Francis, si Grizel po, nung nagkikwento siya, nagtatanong siya, bakit hinahayaan ng Diyos na masakta ng mga bata? Umiyak, kaya niyakap siya ni Pope Francis. At dito po napakaganda nung naging paliwanag ni Pope Francis. Sabi niya, may mga bagay sa buhay na hindi natin makikita kung hindi huhugasan ng luha ang ating mga mata. There are things in our lives, realities in our lives that we can only see with eyes cleansed by our tears. At sabi niya si Jesus, sa maraming pagkakataon umiyak, sa harap ng pangangailangan, sa harap ng sa harap ng pagkawala ng isang anak, sa harap ng gutom, sa harap ng 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 kawala, no? Umiyak si Jesus, no? At sabi niya Dahil sa pag-iyak ni Jesus, naintindihan niya yung pinagdadaanan nung kanyang kaharap na nangangailangan. That is why the second challenge, no, when we use the image of tears, is to be an accompanying church. Pakikilakbay sa mga kabataan. No? And we will see that our young people carry wounds. Marami sa ating mga kabataan ng sugatan, no? Alam nyo po dito, nung wala pang pandemya, dami-dami pong batang sakristan. No? At kapag kapulinggo, ibinababa yung malaking kaldero, no? malaking kaldero ng, uh, ng lugaw o kaya ng lomi o kaya ng sopas. Kala, wala pang limang minuto. Wala nang laman yung kaldero. No? Nakakuha na lahat. No? Sabi ko, ang lalakas naman kumain itong mga batang ito. Eh, parang mga fitos pa, ang liliit, no? Alam niyo po natuklasan ko, kaya pala ganun, kakain na sila ng marami para pag uwi nila sa bahay, hindi na sila makikipag-agawan sa mga kapatid nila. May time po na, nung hindi pa pandemya, gusto ng mga sakristan, Pag magbe-birthday sila, dito sila sa third floor, dito po sa kumbento. At yung kapatid ng aming sakristan, isang sakristan, si Queenie, sabi niya, Father, baka po pwedeng ako rin dyan mag-birthday. At nung birthday niya, nagluto ng spaghetti, ang mga bisita niya, mga sakristan din, no? mga bata din. No? At nung inilabas na yung cake niya, Kumanta kami lahat ng happy birthday. Ang lakas-lakas ng kanta namin. Nawala si Queenie. Yun pala nasa ilalim sa nung mesa. Iyak ng iyak yung bata. Kasi first time nga pala na may mga bisita siya at meron siyang handa sa kanyang birthday. Marami po akong kwento. Pero ito po yung the, the second challenge for us to be an accompanying church. No? Because our young people carry wounds. No? At napakaganda po, kapag kapusugatan, ang ganda po ng kwento ng paralitiko, paano po gumaling yung paralitiko? 
hindi siya sinukuan ng kanyang mga kaibigan. Yung apat na kaibigan niya, dinala siya kay Jesus. Yung apat na kaibigan niya, binitbit siya. Kahit na nung dumating dun sa bahay kung nasan si Jesus, punong-puno ng mga tao, hindi sila sumuko. Umakyat dun sa bubong. Binutas yung bubong ng may bubong para mailapit nila yung paralitiko kay Jesus. Hindi nila sinukuan yung kanilang kaibig. At ito rin yung, siguro as religious educators, no? this is one of the challenges no? that, that the way we teach, the way we form our young people is, is teaching, educating, forming that brings them to Jesus. The ultimate goal is to bring them to Jesus. Kasi kapag ka inilalapit kay Jesus, may gumagaling, may napupusong, may himala. Hindi natin susukuan ang bawat isa. We won't give up leading people to the healing touch of Jesus. And then lastly, number three, konting tawad po, no? number three, looking at Jesus. Si Santo Domingo kapag ka nagdarasal, nakatitig daw kay Jesus sa krus. And uh, kung babalikan po natin yung, yung regalo ng pananampalataya sa atin, no? nung dumating yung pananampalatayang kristyanismo dito po sa ating bansa, what was really the gift? The gift of the first baptism was a gift of identity of belonging to Christ. Yes, the beginnings of Christianity in the Philippines occurred in a historic way. And what was that gift? The gift of baptism, the gift of faith, is the gift to be claimed for Christ. We were claimed for Christ. And claiming for Christ is the gift of identity in the context of, of a relationship. Kaya nga ang tanong natin kapag bininyagan tayo, if you are claimed for Christ, who are we? I am claimed for Christ. At kasama po nyo to, to whom do we belong? We belong to Christ. Kaya nga as educators, no, nagsisimula po ang lahat, mga pagka tayo po'y nagtuturo, nagmamalasakit sa mga duka ng pagtitig sa muka ni Jesus. Kaya nga po si Pedro, bago pa man sa atasan ni Jesus to feed my sheep, to tend my lambs, Tinanong muna siya ni Jesus, do you love me? Kaya tayo pong mga educators, religious educators, no? sa pagtuturo natin ng pananampalataya, lahat po nakaugat sa pagmamahal natin kay Jesus. Walang kahulugan po yung ituturo natin kapag hindi natin masasagot yung unang tanong, do you love me? Pagtitig kay Jesus. Kasi yung pagtitig daw po kay Jesus, kapag tumitig tayo kay Jesus, yung mga orthodox po, pag, orthodox po kapag ka nagdadasal, nakatingin sila doon sa icon. Kasi po yung pagtitig sa mukha, nag-iiwan ng alaala. Sa gunita, sa puso, para sa susunod na may makasalamuha, makikita yung mukha, Jesus, mula sa pagtitig sa kanya sa panalangin mula sa pagtitig sa kanya sa panala. Ito po yung tatlong tatlong uh, uh, paanyaya sa atin, no? To be a listening church, to be an accompanying church, and to be a church because we are claimed for Christ and our identity is based in our on a relationship, no? Yung simbahan na laging nakatitig kay Jesus, simbahan na nagsisimula ang lahat kay Jesus. Marami pa po akong kwento pero time na po no? kaya magdadasal na po tayo. And uh, let this prayer be a renewal of our passion, of our commitment, no? of our mission. The, the, the invitation to be grateful, the invitation to say yes to, our, to, to the mission of the Lord given to us as formators of the young people. So you join me in this prayer no? and let this be a renewal of our commitment of saying yes to God's mission for us. You ask for my hands 
that you might use them for your purpose. I gave them for a moment, then withdrew them for the work was hard. You ask for my mouth to speak out against injustice. I gave you a whisper that I might not be accused. You ask for my eyes to see the pain of poverty. I closed them for I did not want to see. You ask for my life that you might work through me. I gave a small part that I might not get too involved. Lord, forgive my efforts to serve you only when it is convenient for me to do so. Only in those places where it is safe to do so. And only with those who make it easy to do so. Forgive me. Renew me. And send me anew. Amen. Maraming salamat po. Maraming maraming salamat, Father Jack. No, at ako po ay nagpapasalamat dahil kailangan po namin to ngayon, no, mga guro, mga mga teachers, no, yung mga insights po ninyo. Ako bini ko Father Jack, have a nice ko sa inyo. Ang dami kong mga reflection sa buhay at binabasa ko rin yung mga chats, no, yung mga participants po natin. At sana po tayo yung mga teachers na alala ko ay Jesus is a teacher, no? And he is a good storyteller. At maswerte tayo dahil dahil to po si Father Jack, no? And he's a very good storyteller. So, so uh, before we proceed to our question and answer portion or open forum, may I request you first to answer our evaluation. And the link, I think, can be seen on the chat box. Or you may scan the QR code that is flashed in our screen. Okay, so pwede nyo rin pong, pwede po kayong mag-type sa ating chat, chat box, no? If you have questions with, with Father Jack. Yan, naalala ko po Father Jack, si, si Sir Richard Pascoin. Yes. Um, yung siya po ay nagturo sa US yung unang taon niya, ako po ay first year college. So, kaya naalala ko po si Sir Richard, napakabuting tao, napakabuting guro at walang dal moment po sa 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 klase niya. Okay? Yan. So sana po nag sumasagot na po tayo sa ating evaluation. And then tingnan po natin sa chat box and then you can unmute kung meron po mga gusto magtanong. Ayan, Father Jack, meron na ho yata nag invite sa inyo sa chat box. No, kung pwede raw ho kayo ma-invite. No, para makumpleto nyo po yung lahat ng slides ninyo, Father Jack. <laughs> no, kulang ang isang oras para makinig oh po sa inyo. No, kung... Wala bang mag invite ng lunch out? Or... Lunch out? Father, ano pa? Bawal pa? Ay, pwede na pala no, mag-dine no. in. No. And paalala rin po sa mga participants, wala po muna sana mag-leave after ng Zoom natin. After ng closing prayer, dahil meron pa po tayong parapol. Okay? Okay, sige. So now, let us proceed to our question and answer. Baka meron po mga mag-unmute. Baka meron po kayong mga queries, questions, or even commendation. Uh, Ayan, meron nang nag-invite ng lunch. May pakain po sa San Miguel bukas. Yan, <laughs> Ay, si Ay, si Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> si Ma'am Joyce okay. nag ano, nag uh, nag-invite na. <laughs> yeah. Nako siguro Father Jack, uh, wala na kami maitatanong kundi puro pasasalamat na lang siguro ang masasabi namin sa iyo Father Jack. At talagang nakakagaan ng puso at nakaka-inspire at nakaka para masarap ulit pumasok no at titingnan ulit namin. Ito lang sabi ko Father Jack no. Uh, for me as a teacher and being a religion teacher, siguro pwede kong sabihin na uh, This is my dreamland. No? Gusto, gusto ko yung story mo, Father Jack. This is my dreamland. Maraming maraming salamat po, Father Jack. 
No? Thank you At very this much. moment, let us award the certificate of appreciation and gratitude. And allow me to read the text of our certificate. Cat Catholic Education Association of the Philippines National Capital Region, CAPNCR awards this Certificate of Appreciation and Gratitude to Reverend Father Carmelo J. J. P. Arada Jr., Parish Priest of Our Lady of Peña Francia de Manila Parish. In grateful recognition of his invaluable contribution and service as a resource speaker during the CAP NCR 2021 General Assembly Learning Session 9 Christian Formation Committee. Entitled, Gifted, Born to Blossom, It is Our Nature to Nurture. Given this 18th day of September, 2021. And signed, Mr. Jose Ramil E. Javier, Chair of CAP NCR 2021 General Assembly. And Father Nolan Ke, PhD, Regional Trustee, CAP NCR. Marami maraming salamat Father Jack, no? Sobra po. At ako po ay natutuwa na maging uh, moderator bilang kayo ang aming guest speaker. Marami maraming salamat Father Jack. Sana po makapasyal ako sa sa parish ninyo ulit, Father. Okay? Let's give uh, Father a virtual applause. Yan. Nako. <clears throat> okay, so we may now have our selfies for our virtual booth contest. So we are now going to end of this three days gathering of CAP NCR General Assembly. And I believe that this kind of activity okay. will bring us back to our vision and our mission as children of God, as Catholics and religion teachers. Let us, let us always call the presence of the Holy Spirit to fire up our hearts and desire to proclaim God's love and kingdom. So before we end our session, we would like to invite you to our closing Eucharistic celebration at 4 p.m. to be presided by Reverend Father Nolan Ke, and of course the raffle draw after our closing prayer. So to finally end, may I call Mr. Peter A. Kamarat, CCF Head, Arkham ES Cluster 8, for our closing prayer. Let us pause for a while and remember that we are in God's loving presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Spirit of God rest upon me. The Spirit of God consecrates me. The Spirit of God bids me go forth to proclaim God's peace and joy. The Spirit of God sends me forth, called to witness the kingdom of God among all nations. Called to proclaim the good news of God to the poor. Called to console the hearts overcome with great sorrow. Called to comfort the poor who mourn and who weep, called to announce the grace of salvation to all, called to reveal the glory among all people. May the Spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, Mr. Kamarat, for our closing prayer. So now let's have our raffle and our prizes. I think will be Gcash, tama ho ba ako? So, and I don't know the amount, magkano ho ba? Okay. So sige, meron po tayong virtual, ano ba yan? Roleta. 500 worth of Gcash. Yan po mapapanalo na ng ating mga participants. Okay. So we will have uh, five winners. No, Sana po tayo ito. No, mabasa po sa at matawag tayo. Okay? Yan. So, ang ating first winner, si Mary Grace D. Mendoza from St. Mary's Academy of Santa Ana. Yan. Congratulations po, ma'am. Okay, next. Uh, Miss Crisanta E. De La Peña from St. Teresa's College, Quezon City. And our third winner, 500 pesos worth of Gcash, Marisa B. Villafuerte from Pateros Catholic School. Yan, puro mga babae po yung ating mga winners. And our fourth winner, Sir Arjon P. Valencia from St. Joseph School of Gagalangin. Yeah. And for our fifth, yung ating pong last winner ng 500,000 worth of Gcash, si Ms. Luz Pimita Tamirao Dopot from Pasig Catholic College. Yeah. So maraming maraming salamat po sa ating mga sponsors kay Father Jack, No, to all participants. No, thank you, thank you very much. At uh, hi po pala sa aking kapatid na nanonood din ngayon na isang religion teacher. Hi kuya. Okay. Maraming maraming salamat po. Sa lahat po ng uh, bumubuo ng CAP NCR General Assembly. Thank you very much. Kita po tayo sa ating closing Eucharistic celebration.